In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert your trike to electric with the eDrift Trikes DIY kit. The do-it-yourself kit consists of several components. The motor comes pre-assembled into the fork. There's the wiring harness. The battery mount. And the battery itself. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the brake caliper from the fork. Remove everything off of your handlebars. So your grips, uh, your brake, the grips on both sides. Um, one tip is after you remove these end caps, and spray a little bit of silicone oil. Um, if you have um, those little straws uh, that come with your WD-40 or can or um, maybe some other sort of spray lube, um, just bend this a little bit like that using your fingers. Give it a pinch, shove the straw inside, spray it, and then let your trike sit on the side and let the silicone oil or lubricant or whatever you have to sort of seep its way in there, and then this will come off much, much easier. After you've removed everything from your handlebars, you want to take off the stem. So you want to loosen this nut here here using an adjustable wrench um, and also these bolts uh, on yours it might be a little bit different depending on what model trike you have um, but this will allow you to remove the fork from this t uh, tube here so the whole fork will come out as you're removing your fork from your trike you want to be careful and keep make a note of all the pieces that are uh, in between here, your headset and your stem. There are, this is a spacer. Sometimes you have an, another additional washer and there might be another bearing in there, but make a note of all the pieces that are there and the order that they come in. Uh, this will come in handy when you go to reinstall the motorized fork into the trike. When you remove your fork, you'll see that at the very, very bottom of the fork, there will be this little washer-like item here. This piece is called the crown race. Uh, to remove, you may need to remove the crown race to reinstall onto the motor that has been sent to you. The crown race needs to match with the bearings in your existing headset so that uh, the fork will turn properly. So to remove this, the best way to go about it is to get a razor blade. And this razor blade is probably gonna have to be sacrificed because you won't be able to, getting it in here sometimes can be a little bit difficult, but if you're, as long as you're patient, take the razor blade, insert it in, find a little spot to wedge the razor blade in, use a uh, rubber mallet and lightly tap your way in and around all the way around and that will loosen this up and you should be able to remove the crown race. You want to take the crown race from your old fork from your trike and install it onto your new fork with the motor. After that's in then you can reinsert it back into your tricycle after you've reinserted your new motorized fork into the trike, you're going to want to tighten uh, all of these connections here on the stem, and you want to make sure that your front wheel is lined up properly. So the best way to go about doing that is to come around the other side of the trike. You can line things up. Usually I just like to wedge my feet in between the, the tires here and adjust it and slowly tighten these um, and you're going to want to tighten this nut first to make sure that everything is sandwiched everything is sandwiched in nice and tight so that you have no gaps here everything should look uh, nice and tight and it should turn very freely after you've tightened the top nut Go for these two, uh, and that should be that. You want to install and start to plug in all of your cables. So from the motor, you've got two lines. You have the 
actual motor cable itself, uh, and the battery line. Uh, this extra line that you see here is a programming line, um, and this is on the golden motor motors. So if you don't have a golden motor, um, you won't have that. But everything should be pre-labeled. So if you look at your wiring harness, motor line plugs into motor line. Um, an important thing to note is that you'll see these little arrows here. There you go. Uh, and there's an arrow on the other side of the corresponding plug. All you got to do is line those two up and you should be good. Here's how I like to run the wiring on my trikes. So the motor cable comes up. I leave myself a little bit of slack here so that when I'm turning the wheel, you can see that that wire will bend and kind of hang out there. Um, but it's never really under any real stress. You want to give yourself a little bit of slack. So as you can see here. Uh, and what I like to do is attach my wiring harness uh, to the frame of the trike. And I'll run a little bit of heat shrink over the cables just to kind of clean things up a little bit so that th they don't stand out too much. Um, but you can zip tie everything together. And that should keep everything in place. On the handlebars, when I'm installing my throttle, I like to keep my throttle on the left-hand side. Um, and the reason for that is because a lot of folks are right-hand dominant, so I like to keep the brakes accessible. Um, obviously, this is all user preference. Um, you can run the brakes e just as easily on the left-hand side as you can on the right. Just flip the whole thing over. Um, it's all user preference, but this is the way I like to do it. So throttle on the left, cruise control on the right, also brake on the right. Just a quick note on the wires coming off the front end of your handlebars. So you'll have your electric brake cut off, your cruise control, your throttle. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of zip tie these things together and make myself a nice little single line connection and just sort of clean up that front end. Time to install the battery mounting plate to your trike. It's pretty simple. So you can see what you want to do is remove the screws here if this thing's attached to your trike. Um, there's a little rubber piece that will go around the body of the trike. And after you insert that you put this little collar back on and you install your hardware. Um, one thing to note is that I like to run uh, one washer at the top and two beneath this little black bracket. And you want to make sure, and that should be perfectly spaced so that the screw does not come out or protrude. As you can see, that's pretty flush right there. It actually might even be a little bit inset, but you don't want it to stick out beyond um, this uh, aluminum um, battery plate because it's going to hinder the battery. So after you insert the battery, there are these little tabs that come in that allow you to slide the battery down and lock everything into place. When your battery is mounted to the trike, uh, you want to slide your battery on to the mounting plate. Uh, make sure that you lock your battery in place so that it won't pop out. Um, and as you can see, if you've done everything correctly, this thing will be really on there. It'll be very difficult to for the battery to move around. It should be very, very sturdy, uh, and your battery won't fly off when you're drifting. Connect your lines. As you can see, this is how I do it on the other trikes. Don't forget to hook up your brake line. Make sure that your rotor and your caliper, everything is lined up properly. Um, and after that's all done and everything is hooked up, uh, be sure to test your trike out. What I like to do is I like to prop up the trike. So I use jack stands. Uh, and I put the jack stands underneath both sides of the pegs, lift the entire trike off the ground, uh, turn everything on. So on your trike, if you have the golden motor, all you needed to do 
is turn on the battery. Um, and depending on what style battery you have, you may have this style battery. If you have this style, the switch is on the other side. So just turn it on, and that should turn the entire system on. Uh, and once you get on the throttle, the trike should go. That's all there is to it. You've converted your drift trike to electric in six easy steps. Get out there, have fun, and drift safe. Thanks for watching.